This morning I've been to the post office because I had an Etsy sale and I needed to put in the cash from Wednesday's clean, which was yesterday. Um, but when I got back, <laughs> I'd forgotten to do the Etsy sale. Put the money in, forgot about the envelope, and now I'll have to go back this afternoon, which is fine because I need to get out and walk more. Um, and it's only down the road, so that's fine. On the way out, I went past the little cafe that I often see cheap deals in and there was a load of stuff outside so what have I bought today well first toothpaste 50p each toothpaste is expensive and a necessity so I always pick up the cheap ones um, these flatbreads pack of whatever these is there for there that was 20p bag of tomatoes that was 50p and four tins of sardines in tomato sauce. These are M&S, they're posh, and they were also 50p each. So there's some extras for the stocks. Um, today I am going to do a food audit. So I'd say every six months I go through and check what I've got in the cupboards and the freezer, and I make sure that my spreadsheet is up to date because although I do the numbers as I go so if I take something out of the stocks I'll knock it off the spreadsheet so that I know exactly what I'm actually eating spending at the same time I always make mistakes so um, I'm not going to take you through the entire routine because it takes ages to go through every single thing to get off on the sheet check what's in the cupboard but I'm going to show you an overview of what I've got in my stocks at the moment and I wouldn't say it's an enormous amount I try to keep a hold for as long as possible on things like tins and packets and stuff like that because I almost exclusively shop for yellow stickers and freebies on cashback apps now I wouldn't even say that it's that limiting because I've got quite a good variety of stuff, but also a lot of the things that I buy on discount uh, can go into the freezer. A lot of them are cupboard staples, and things do last beyond their um, shelf dates, the dates on the packaging. I've got stuff that's two years old that is still absolutely fine. So, But it, it's good to go in and do an actual stock take every six months. Because I will spot things that I think, I need to use this now, or I was holding this off for a particular reason, and the reasons pass, and I just think, oh, I'll just eat it. But I try not to just not buy anything and then eat all the stocks, because you never know what's coming. I mean, 2020 was a good example of how not being prepared could cause real problems. So, you know, in the lockdowns, you know, people were pretty much fighting over food on the shelves and stockpiling toilet rolls and rice and chickpeas. There was this obsession with chickpeas in 2020. And I mean, I do always keep a few tins in stock, but I wouldn't have say I'm obsessed about eating chickpeas. I always keep the staples in, so there's always dried pasta, rice. Um, I do have tins of chickpeas. I also have um, tinned fish. Uh, baked beans, um, lots of flour for making bread and those things will sit on the shelf for a long time and will mean that if I don't see any cheap on the shelves for a long time I've got them in stock so some things will come in groups and you'll see like a suddenly there'll be lots of them everywhere and then you won't see anything for six months so I do like to take advantage of those and then use them gradually. It also means that I'm not overeating because I'm being careful about what I'm using and what I'm spending because I am a foodie and I am a grazer and I need to not be any of those things. So being mindful about the different foods that I have in the cupboard, what does actually need using, what can stay there longer and what things are treats. I have an emergent, what I call the emergency snack bag emergency break glass snack bag and if I see like really cheap chocolate or crisps or what or there's a freebie going 
I will put those things into that box, but I won't just eat them. I'll leave them there as a, if I've got a day where it's like, I just really need a bit of chocolate. And I try to be really careful about these things because I don't eat all the right foods. And although I eat a lot of fresh food, I don't eat as healthily as I should. So I try to limit those things and keep them as rare treats because it's junk and it's not good for you. So I try to be really careful with it all. So I'm going to show you a little overview now and um, I'll look at the items that are that are in there. I will go into my spreadsheet for the rollover for this month and I will make the adjustments where I need to and then when next month starts it'll all be up to date. There's always a few discrepancies. There's always like, oh I've forgotten to uh, knock off a tin of beans or... Um, a jar of peanut butter or something like that. It's never drastic, but it could be the difference between a few pounds on a month or not. And it might mean that this month um, looks a bit more expensive because I've forgotten to knock a few things off over the last couple of months. But at the end of the year, that's, that's the budget that matters, is what did I spend for the entire year? That's generally how I work things out. So I might have a, a heavier month and I might have a lighter month if maybe I'm away or there just weren't that many deals and I was just living off the stocks that I had in the cupboard. So I'm going to take you and show you um, and we'll have a little look at what I have in the cupboard at the moment. So those of you who were watching my channel last year will remember this piece of furniture coming back to me. And this is uh, a tall boy that my grandfather made and it got left behind in a house move. A long time ago, uh, 12, 14 years ago, and now it's come back to me. So this is where I now keep. The bottom half is full of all my fabric stocks for my business, and this piece of furniture sits in my workroom. But the top half, which I love, slides open on both sides, and I've used this as my larder. So let's have a look. See if we can get this to focus in properly. Um, we have some cereals at the back here, um, porridge, always a good staple to have in, lots of tea, got some teas there. I will buy these at um, Sainsbury's where either on nectar points or when I have a gift card and very often these will have nectar points on the nectar prices so I will collect points against them. Coffee, always keep a couple of jars of coffee. There's some decaf coffee there. I was donated because somebody decided they didn't like decaf. Nothing wrong with it. At the bottom here, there's loads of staples. Um, I've got loads. I've got this is couscous at the bottom here. I had three of these and I've had these in the cupboard for. I think I bought them about two, probably more years ago. But this stuff lasts forever and it goes really far. Noodles, noodles, noodles. These are all freebies. These are all freebies that I got, um, these ones are the freebies, these were discounted, these ones were discounted, these Viffons, and there's um, plant veggie bake things as well, oh this phone's not going to focus, there we go, uh, the lighting here is terrible. And there's more um, more noodles at the back there. These are good things to have in stock. These are like the five minute noodles. So if you put them in hot water and they're done. I, have, I also buy fresh noodles when I see them. And they are in the freezer because they do freeze pretty well. But these, I don't see that very often. So I keep all of these and we'll use these a bit over time pasta I have some sauces there's bread sauce and onion sauce in there just in that little section there loads of peanut butter the little cafe down the road had a big thing on getting rid of peanut butter these were a pound those were a pound because this stuff's expensive in the shops and I do have a little bit of a peanut butter addiction so these will last forever um, I have this, this is good for baking, I use it as an alternative to vanilla essence, does the same job and often I get them on nectar points, I buy them free with nectar points or I'll buy them when they're doing a good nectar prices um, points offer on it. Uh, lots of stock cubes, again these 
not these ones, I bought those on a gift card, but these ones I bought in Morrison's, you can see that, I bought these about two years ago, they last forever, tins, I've got a couple of tins of fruit there, that's pineapples, um, oh, focus, come on, you can do it, and that one at the back is peaches, um, I have lentils and that's partly open and long grain rice there and you can see in there there is um, that's sardines there that is um, mackerel loads of beans in there that was a freebie Branston beans really nice and there's a there's a Sainsbury's one there let's open up the other half loads of stuff in here chopped tomatoes um, chickpeas Corn beef, which I'm saving for a rainy day because I love tin corn beef. This stuff is so expensive now. I got that free on a cashback deal. Um, tinned potatoes, just in case. I've got mushy peas and marafat peas. And some uh, white butter beans at the back. Some jam, which I'm hanging on to. Um, down the bottom here is all the baking stuff. So I have loads of flour. And... This is the mincemeat haul from Christmas just gone. I got three of those. can't remember what the discount was on those, but they were discounted on the shelf rather than a yellow sticker. Also got, so still got some brandy, some uh, brandy soaked fruit from two years ago, which still using that and there's nothing wrong with that. Cheap pancake mix, got one of those left and a, um, shortbread mix. These packet mixes are actually really disappointing so I would never have paid full price for those that's for sure. So that's what my cupboard looks like. Sorry about the focus, the light in here is shocking. So it's not a ridiculous amount of stuff I don't think but it's all long life and the reason I have things like lots of flour and stuff is because you used to see a lot of flour on discounts Come on, focus. You know you can do it. Uh, there used to be a lot of flour on discount, and I haven't seen flour on discount for a long time. So I try to be careful with it and hang on to it. Most of it is brown flour, uh, because uh, I make uh, soda bread. But there is some self-raising in there, and they're really cheap in Sainsbury's anyway, so I tend to buy that on nectar points when I've earned them. Uh, loads of drinks. There's like, there's like soda folk and stuff in there, which, um, uh, oh God, I bought those at least two years ago. They will get used eventually, but again, they're little occasionals. This is where I keep all the free beer <laughs> that I've acquired through apps and uh, just like freebie stuff. There's tons of it. Loads of these served, which they went through a phase of gifting loads of these for free. Uh, there's a pina colada one there. Most of these are lime and um, there's a cranberry one. There's some Starbucks coffees. I don't know what the date is on those. Let me have a quick look. Uh, these should have been used last year. I should probably use these in the next couple of months to be sure. Some minor figures ones at the back there as well. Um, loads of... I've got really into um, alcohol-free beer tastes like beer and I don't get drunk which is great for me so I have a load of those I have some stuff that is freebies so this was a free one that I picked up last year there's a, a Victoria Malaga so there's all sorts of stuff lurking in there and all that in there was free all that in there was free um, I mean why wouldn't you you know so there's a load of stuff there. Sorry about the focus on that. It's one of the problems with using an old phone is that and shooting under dodgy lights is that you don't always get the focus you want. Um, so that's the food audit that I've been working with for the cupboards. There's some stuff in the freezer that I need to go through as well. I have my two little freezers there 
those are like the caravan type freezers uh, there's no room in my kitchen for a freezer at all there's no space so I bought one of these little countertop freezers when I first moved in here and then I needed another one so I bought another one I stacked them on top of each other I have an under counter fridge with an ice box ice boxes are useless and the handle's busted on it and the landlord won't fix it so I have it wedged shut with cardboard which does the job but it's not big enough for all the stuff that I stash so my freezer is full of you know milk and vegetables that I've blanched and all sorts of stuff that I've got on discount or free and never run out of food so I could probably not buy any food not buy any food I mean I'd have to buy milk and probably vegetables but with everything else I could probably not buy anything for about two months and be fine but I don't want to clear everything out because if we do go through a phase where where there are no yellow stickers at all or you know there's something wrong income wise and I need to be careful then I'm covered you know and I don't have to eat all that stuff now um, there's one other thing that I have to show you I last year I treated myself to a overdoor hanger um, because I wanted to have like a rotational thing of things that I could use in the kitchen that were right there so there's a whole bunch of other things that I've had nearly all freebies and discounts so things that I wouldn't normally buy but I really love like mayonnaise uh, these soy, these fancy soy sauces and things like that so there's those pesto I love pesto really expensive the sauce shop was doing some freebies last year some of these lovely pasta sauces so there's all sorts of things here that are really treat foods so yeah there's quite a few things in my cupboards which I consider treats or luxuries like condiments um, like fancy soy sauces and stir fry sauces and things like that which I would not normally buy um, branded tea bags um, cereal these are all things that I consider luxuries they're not necessities in my life food wise I don't need them to survive uh, I'm not going to die of malnutrition but when I see them I like them because they just add variety in and so that's kind of where I am with my, my food at the moment it's keeping a nice healthy supply like a like a prepping supply I suppose and I know there are prepping channels where people um, do hang on to quite a lot of stuff I mean I think oh maybe I'm a bit of a food hoarder but when I look at it it doesn't actually look that much I don't think I don't think it's that bad it's a doable amount I'm not like stuffing it into corners in rooms because I've run out of room and it will all get used I will I will go through dates and check dates and make sure that things get used and in fact when I was doing my check earlier there was one thing that I pulled out and thought I really need to use this this is from my childhood Angel Delight so I bought this look 19p and it makes I think it's half a pint it's half a pint of milk and you just stir it in make sure it's well mixed and then leave it to thicken for five minutes and that's all it is I used to love Angel Delight I have no idea if Angel Delight now is like the one that I remember from my childhood this is banana flavour it says made with real fruit I don't believe that for a second but it was 19p and that's a couple of desserts out of that so I'm going to make that this afternoon because it's best before date it was October 2022 I am sure this sort of food would probably last about 50 years in a uh, in a store somewhere and still be okay so I'm going to use that today because I have had no real dessert since I got back uh, a week ago it'll be a week tomorrow since I was driving home and I've been really good I've had some some yogurts um, like some natural Greek yogurt and that honey flavored Greek Morrison's yogurt but I've not really had anything since I got back I'm trying to be better about eating I'm trying to not snap because I eat too much I know I eat too much I am a foodie I work from home I'm self-employed I live on my own I 
don't have a particularly crazy busy life and it means that I get to eat so I'm trying to get better winter is now over I went through every winter I get like everybody I go into a bit of semi hibernation and I just eat a lot and you know when it gets dark at like half past four and you're hiding under your blanket watching TV and when I'm cold I eat more as well I mean I can have hot drinks I do that but it, it triggers me into eating as well now that the light is back we're, where the light is earlier in the day and we're getting more light later I'm more awake I'm more full of energy I am eating less and now is the time to curb those bad habits so um, I've not bought any bread apart from that but 20p come on most of that will probably go in the freezer anyway um, and what I've been doing to stop my snacking is I've moved my intermittent fasting hours I've closed up the window a bit so instead of having my dinner five till six I'm having it four till five because I've noticed that as that last hour rolls around I start to snack more before dinner which is ridiculous so I will have my lunch at 12 between 12 and 1 and what I'm doing I'm over making my lunch so that there's enough for me to nibble on the rest of the day so instead of snacking on different things like cakes biscuits bread with peanut butter on it which is a real bad one for me I'm just grazing for a longer period on the same lunch that I would have had from 12 till 1. So I'm eating less and it's a better food because generally I cook with fresh vegetables, fish, that sort of thing. So I'm hoping that's going to help. Um, we'll see how we do on that. I've only been doing it since Saturday, so what's well, been four days. But I am going to eat the Angel Delight. I'm going to split this into two because it makes half a pint. I don't need half a pint, so I'm going to split this mixture into two so that I make it with a quarter of a pint on each one and I'll show you how that comes out later. Okay, so I am going to make my Angel Delight now. I am going to make a half of the sachet that I had. I need to put in 300 millilitres of milk to make half a pint for the whole sachet, so I need to make 150. I'm going to use my little measure, and instead of whisking it as it suggests, I'm going to stick it in a jar, and you'll find out why in a moment. So, I need to put in 150 mils into my jar. So, oops, a daisy. There goes 60 mil. One twenty. There we go, one fifty. Done. Right, now I'm going to add the hundred and uh, the half of the sachet. The sachet was fifty nine grams, so uh, I basically put thirty in here. Uh, let's find a teaspoon. Let's get this into the milk. That's that. Tastes like bananas. Let me put the lid on. Make that nice and tight. You're supposed to whisk it. But, this is a much more effective and less messy way of doing it. So you need to keep going with this until it's really creamy. Creamy and smooth. And then you have to leave it for five minutes. So that's that. I'm going to leave it for five minutes and we'll come back and give it a taste test. Okay, five minutes done. In fact, more than five minutes done. I left it longer because it's not really thickened. That could well be my fault because I separated out the packaging and that's probably messed up the ratios. Um, but it is like enough to try. The 
That's quite nice. And it is as I remember it. Oh, I like banana flavour. I still wouldn't go out of my way to buy this though. 19p, yes. Mm, not so much anything else. This is quite nice though. Mm. I like banana flavour things. I forget that I do. I don't really buy banana flavour things. Except bananas. Mm. Okay, that's a bit more. So, <laughs> I'm going to leave, leave some of that for later. I need to make things last. And that includes this. That's why I've done it in two, because now the rest of that packet, I can have another day and enjoy it all over again. So, okay, Angel of Delight is as I remember it. It's nice. Um, fun times. <laughs> Childhood desserts are the best. And probably just full of all the awful things that they were back then as well. So, uh, thank you for watching my April food audit. I probably won't do another one of these for another six months. I only do it a couple of times a year just to keep on top and make sure I'm not going drastically wrong with my numbers. Uh, there were a few errors, but it wasn't anything major, and it'll all get readjusted for eight, for May, and then it'll all be back to normal, so that's all good. So that's another little job ticked for April, which is good. The sun is coming out, so I might even try and get out into the garden later and start tidying up. I do want to do a, a, like a vlog of me in my little garden space getting organised. I haven't done anything to it since last year, so I've got to sweep out all the leaves, get out any rubbish that's gathered in the corners, and assess what plants I have, how much earth I have, what I need to do. So that could be quite good fun. So watch out for that coming hopefully soon, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye!